Welcome back aboard the F-15 for DCS World, guys. We will be continuing Course 8 of Basic Fundamentals F-15C, going over the radar. Um, today we'll be going over the basic controls of the radar in-game, as well as range wall scan mode. Uh, the next course will go over track wall scan, and then after that we will be going over uh, weapon employment by each weapon. So we'll make a video for the AMRAM, a video for the Sparrow, and one for the Sidewinder. Um, we'll probably just throw the guns at uh, one of the end of one of those. The gun system's pretty simple to use. All right. So without further ado, um, also real quick, actually, before we jump into it, I do want to apologize. It's been so long since I pushed out a video. Um, the family and I just moved into a brand new house. Um, and uh, between moving and three kids, the wife, work, all that things, it's just been sort of hard to be able to sit down and focus on punching these tutorials out. But uh, we're all squared up, we're all settled in, so hopefully from here on out, it, uh, the video production should be quite a bit faster. All right, so uh, stick with me, guys, and uh, we'll keep this moving along a little bit faster now. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. We'll start as usual going over the controls. So we'll go to adjust controls. And my apologies, guys, if you guys have a hard time seeing this, I'll try to zoom this in as best I can. Um, hopefully the editing comes out okay. Currently, the scale GUI option within DCS is broken when using a 4K display. Um, basically, your mouse is not where you think it is. Okay, so getting into it, um, we're going to... I'm going to give you guys all the controls, just so you guys understand how that's going to work. All the controls from radar operation to weapon employment. We're going to go from top to bottom down here. So we won't necessarily go into all of these controls today, but it's good to have them mapped and uh, ready to roll. So first is number two on your keyboard up at the, this will be for the number row at the top of your keyboard. It'll be beyond visual range. Three uh, will be close air combat vertical scan mode, followed by four close air combat bore mode. And the sixth key on your keyboard, which would be longitudinal missile aiming mode or flood mode. All right, we'll go ahead and scroll on down. Next will be the cannon. So cannon, you'll press Charlie on your keyboard, which will switch you to the M61 Vulcan. Keep going down here a little bit. Display zoom in and zoom out. This will change the uh, radar scan display range. Okay, uh, so the minus sign will increase the range, uh, the scan range that's displayed on your VSD. The equal sign will reduce it. Um, ECM, electronic countermeasures, you'll want that on. That's basically your jammer. Uh, eject, in case things go south, left control, echo. You'll punch that uh, three times. You can just hold left control, hit your echo button three times, and uh, you'll punch on out. All right, let's go ahead and scroll down here. going keep going keep going uh, predict target range decrease and increase this is pilot discretion I do not use this um, but right control equal and right control minus what this does is in the event um, and I'll show you guys what this looks like at some point today um, if a target is jamming you and you have your weapon selected so you have the AMRAM specifically I believe um, well I know you can do it with the Sparrow but the AMRAM is going to be the only one that can touch out and reach somebody um, if they're probably jamming you um, but basically what you can do is you can guesstimate where the target is and tell the missile to go to that point. Um, it's extremely ineffective um, and 99.9999% of the time winds up being a waste of a missile. So um, I wouldn't worry about that one. Um, radar return to search. Don't worry about that. You can simply unbug your target and um, that will uh, take you back to the search mode. You can bind that if you want. You'll have to map a key to it at your discretion. Radar on and off, obviously big one, the India key. Radar pulse, freak, radar pulse repeat frequency select, always a mouthful to say. Right shift in India, this changes between uh, high setting, medium setting, and uh, interleave, and we'll go over what those are here in just a minute. Radar range wall track, or a range wall scan and track wall scan. Right alt in India, that'll be a big one. Um, Let's keep going down here. Um, RW will be a tutorial of itself, so we won't go over that today. Scan zone, 
the scan zones uh, there's th there's a couple of caveats so scan zone left and right uh, right shift and comma and right shift and forward slash these are again going to be pilot discretion I didn't feel the need to map something to them um, you'll use these when you're in track wall scan and that will move the uh, radar azimuth range to the left and right but also moving your TDC left and right will do the same thing so um, that's entirely up to you I'll show you some advantages and disadvantages to that uh, pilot preference again um, if you have the buttons and the comfortable spacing for it by all means mark them uh, scan zone down is right shift and period scan zone up is uh, right shift and semicolon um, these are critical uh, remember that the radar is a big flashlight okay so scan zone up and down point your flashlight up and down okay so by the way, guys, I do want to emphasize that if you have not seen the previous tutorial, um, I highly recommend you go back and watch it as it's uh, going to be imperative. If, if you don't watch that one, you, you may not quite understand what we're talking about in today's course. Okay, I may not get some of the references. Uh, let's see here. Target designator. So this is option one. Uh, there are two different ways to slew the TDC around. So option one would be period for down. Uh, Gosh, I can't think. Comma for left and forward slash for right and semicolon to move the TDC up. Um, if this is again uh, pilot discretion, I don't use it. I just move my TDC around. But if you want to quickly be able to center it, you can use right control in India. And of course, the golden of uh, all buttons here, target lock. Actually, I'm going to say that's a second. This is the silver winner here. Um, we all know that actually firing the missile is everybody's favorite. So enter on your keyboard. This is the enter above your shift button on standard keyboards. Um, I believe all keyboards. You guys have to correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, do not mistake this with the numpad enter. Okay. Remember numpad enter resets your uh, view. So enter for target lock and unlock. Uh, let's see here. Scrolling down. Unlock TWS target again. This is one that you would have to bind on your own. Um, if you remember from the previous tutorial track wall scan, you're able to lock four targets simultaneously, and we'll definitely get a good look at that in the next tutorial. Um, but this allows you to unlock a single target versus unlocking all four of them. So that's going to be pilot preference. Weapon change with the Delta. This will change your stores. Um, on your outer wing so allow you to select the different missile systems weapon fire space this is for the m61 vulcan with the gun selected right alt space for weapon release weapon release remember is um, actually launching a missile so don't mistake weapon fire with weapon release weapon fire is guns weapon release is your missiles weapon jettison i'm going to say go ahead and map this if you can unless you're real captain jack flash on the keyboard and you won't forget this one Left control and whiskey um, will jettison your weapons. Um, you'll have to hit it for each uh, set of stores that you want it to jettison. But the times that you would use this is, let's say you took a lot of damage or you just uh, realize that you're in a bad spot, you need to turn and run for home. Um, you do it quickly. You would jettison all your weapons, lighten up your aircraft, turn and run like hell. Or if you're coming in for landing and you're, you're pretty banged up, you would jettison your weapons in case of uh, catastrophic landing. Uh, the other jettison I am going to tell you to go ahead and do for your own benefit is, I think it's just under jettison. Let's go back down here. Uh, nope, that's fuel dump. Jettison fuel tanks. Left alt and Romeo. Um, if you get into a merged fight or, again, in a position where you need to be able to maneuver the aircraft quickly without any uh, dead weight on the wings, you would hit uh, left alt and Romeo and jettison your tanks. Um, with the tanks on, your maneuverability um, will be severely limited, so keep that in mind. Uh, you don't want to get in dogfight with the tanks on you. The other thing is uh, you need to be in relatively level flight. Uh, I think the tolerance is anything outside of a 10 degrees bank or climb, and you will not be able to jettison the tanks. Okay? And it may be less than that. Don't quote me on that percentage. Um, I always try to be in level flight when I dump them. And finally, what we'll do is talk about the method two for TDC um, operation. 
You can go TDC slew horizontal and TDC slew vertical if your HOTAS, um, like the Thrustmaster Warthog, the X-56, the X-55, um, all three of those I know have them, just to name a few. They have a little mouse on them for the Warthog. It's up on front of your middle finger on the throttle. And um, I believe on the 55 and 56 um, from Satek, it's down at your thumb, on the, again, on the throttle. And what you can do is map your um, slew to this and uh, be able to control it from there. Now with that, um, you want to make a couple of adjustments. You want to set a dead zone. Um, I typically set about five, and this way you can rest your finger on the mouse without the TDC moving around. And you want to greatly reduce the saturation on the Y axis. Um, otherwise, when you barely touch that mouse, that TDC will fly across the VSD. So that's why we do that. And again, we add a little bit of curvature. That way, if you only touch the mouse a little bit, the TDC moves slow. If you move it all the way over, it, it obviously moves faster. And the only other thing is I like my TDC on the VSD to follow my finger movement. So if I bring my finger up towards the ceiling, I want the TDC to go up. Um, if you find that you want it to do that, but it's doing the opposite, come here to the vertical um, axis and invert it. Okay, so that's it for controls. Let's go ahead and get into this. So the first thing we're going to do is unlock our camera again here. We're going to come down here to our radar and we're going to pause our camera and we're going to hit Indy on our keyboard and bring this bad boy to life. And we'll talk about first what we're at here. So first, let's talk about the radar scan range. Um, that's actually really horrible verbiage. What this is, is the VSD display range, okay? So we are only going to see anything between zero, which is right here at our nose, and 20 miles out, okay? If we hit display zoom out, so the minus sign, if I remember correctly. Oh, I don't know why that's not working. There we go. We use the keyboard. Hit the, hit the minus sign out. We're now seeing anything between 0 and 40 miles, 80, 160, etc. But you need to remember that just because you're only seeing it 40 miles, that is not how far your radar signal is going. Your radar signal is going much, much further than that aircraft uh, that are much further than 40 miles out can, um, can pick up that you are broadcasting radar uh, transmissions. Okay? So always remember that we have our TDC, our target designator here in the middle. And here's, remember I said we can slew it around. Okay. We have our horizon line. Okay. This is not to be mistaken with your wing position. This is the exact opposite. So this line here matches the horizon out the window over here. Okay. We have our upper and lower band uh, radar elevation scan ranges. We have our elevation carrot. Okay. So this is our flashlight pointing so the flashlight pointing up working its way down flashlight pointing at its lowest point okay at currently at 20 miles remember we're scanning between 10 and 30,000 feet if we move our TDC up so now we're in about the 35 mile range we're now scanning at 35 miles between 2 and 38,000 and this is where our scan zone up and down comes in so we're going to do our scan zone down okay oh that's reversed how did that happen? All right, so we'll go with... There we go. I don't know why the controls are all screwed up right now. Um, you know what? Give me just a second. I'm going to restart the Thrustmaster controls. Give me just a second here. I'm not quite sure why it's being difficult. So we'll do that, and then have it run again. Alright, let's see if that fixed it. It did not. It's completely reversed. Wow, that is the damnedest thing I've ever seen. Okay, so back at our tutorial here. So if we use right shift and period, we're going to point our flashlight down. Okay, so now it's at zero between zero and 12,000 feet. So the way to picture that is basically only half of the flashlight isn't pointing at the ground. Now we're going to use scan zone up, so sh uh, right shift and semicolon. And we're going to keep pointing our flashlight up. So now we're not looking at the ground at all. Our flashlight's pointed only up in the air between 19 and 53,000 feet. Okay. Down here in the bottom left, we have our current um, radar pulse frequency mode. So right now it's an interleave. Interleave will cycle between medium and high. If we hit uh, right shift in India, we will lock it into high mode. Right shift in India again, medium mode, 
and right shift again puts it back into interleaf. Right now we'll put it into high mode. Now notice that the numbers are counting here. What this is is called the bars, okay? Um, the ANAPG 63 Pulse Doppler Radar for DCS World has a four bar scan. And what that is is up here. It's the vertical scan um, levels. So at one, notice we're up at the top, two, three, and four. Okay, so that's what we mean by um, bars. Okay, and then obviously we have our horizontal um, azimuth, which is scanning at a 60 degrees off the nose. Okay, so half from center to the far right is 30, and from the center to the far left is another 30 for a total of 60 degrees scan. Okay. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and move on. Remember, we have our ground speed here at 475 knots and our true air speed at also 475 knots. And like I said before, take this with a grain of salt. Don't put a lot of weight into those air speeds. Okay. So we now have gone over the basics of the radar. All right. Now what we need is something to track with the radar. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and bring up our radio menu and we'll bring up a contact. Hopefully we haven't flown too far to miss it. Okay, so we've got a bandit out there. Um, RWR has identified it so far, but uh, let's go ahead and find it on our radar. So we're currently scanning or seeing up to 40 miles out. Let's go ahead and lock this screen again and again. He should be pretty far out that we have time to mess around for a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do, you know, we're not picking up. We're in interleave right now. Remember uh, from the previous tutorial, I think we went over it, but just in case not. Interleave, you are most likely, let's actually talk about these for a second before I get into the aircraft. So first thing we'll talk about is, um, before we track an aircraft here, is the different radar frequency, radar pulse frequency modes. So first you have interleave. And as I've talked about before, interleave will cycle between medium and high. Now what's the advantage between the two? High is, I want you to think of it as a very bright spotlight, okay? So high is a spotlight, sees very, very far, has a very, very high intensity beam, okay? It is ideal for tracking targets that are on a head-on aspect and at a much further distance, okay? Then you have medium, which is sort of like your mag light, okay? So we have a spotlight and we have a mag light. The mag light can't see as far, okay, but it can see more up close. It is easier to determine targets up close and targets that are on anything other than a um, head-on aspect. Now, it's not to say that it won't track a target that's on head-on aspect. It's just it's better at seeing targets with a tail aspect, so targets that you are behind, and targets that have a, either a left or right flanking aspect. Okay, now there's more to it than that. Um, another um, part of medium asp or medium, uh, gosh, I can't think right now, the frequency is um, they need to be at a slower closure rate. Okay, and we'll go over that here in a little bit and definitely more when we start getting into engaging targets. But there's a couple different variables, but the two big ones that I want you to think about is a spotlight, very, very bright, sees very, very far, great for targets that are coming right at you with a very high speed uh, at a high closure rate. Okay. For those of you who don't know, closure rate is the speed at which two aircraft are coming together. To sum this up very, very quickly, if you are flying at 600 knots and I am flying at 600 knots and we are flying directly at each other for a head-on collision, our closure rate is 1,200 knots. Okay? So I don't want to get too into that, but that, that's basically the, the, the meat and potatoes of closure rate. So aircrafts that are with a low closure rate, that are in at a closer range, and that have either a left, right, or tail aspect, that's where medium um, uh, PFR comes into place, pulse frequency. So, or RPF, excuse me, radar pulse frequency comes into play. High is got targets, longer range, coming head at you, fast closure rate. Okay? So that's the easiest way to determine the two. Interleave cycles between the two. 
So it takes longer to scan. And what it will do is, remember we just talked about the bars, okay, your vertical scan bars, is one will be high, two will be medium, three will be high, four will be medium. Okay, so you got to think about those changes as well. Okay, so hopefully there aren't any questions about that. If there are, you know what to do, leave them in the comments and I'll address them. All right, so let's go ahead and get back after this. So we know we have a target at exceeding 40 miles. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit our right shift in India. And we're going to lock her into high mode. And we're also going to come up to 80 miles. And there we go. We have a radar contact. So pausing just a second. Now let's talk about rectangles and circles. Your life of the ANAPG 63 pulse Doppler radar. Who comes up with these names? Okay, so how we get a square or a rectangle versus a circle is through not only the radar but also through the IFF. IFF is a computer system within most uh, military aircraft and, and m even most commercial aircraft, airliners, um, anything with what's called a transponder. Okay. Um, IFF stands for identify friend or foe. Um, and by the way, that comment about anything with a transponder is incorrect. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Disregard that. So IFF stands for identify friend or foe. The easiest way to describe IFF and how it works is with a phone call. Okay, this is very, very basic, guys. So remember, that's the, that's the basis behind these tutorials is to keep it basic. So it's a phone call. And here's how this phone call plays out. There are three possibilities to uh, to these phone calls. Number one, I call you and you pick up the phone. Hey, Mike, how are you? How are things going? Oh, I'm doing great, man. How you been? How are the kids? Oh, little Jimmy's great. Okay, we're friends. That's going to be represent be re represented by a dot or a circle on your radar. Okay, it, it's a little dot. Okay, now let's talk about the rectangle. Scenario two is so scenario one was identified friendly scenario two is unknown identification presumed hostile okay so it's one of those situations where i call you because i know you're coming over to my house you're heading towards me right now you're walking towards me so i give you a call on your cell phone before you get to me and you don't answer okay there's no voicemail nothing telling me who you are okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to assume I'm going to say I don't know who you are and to protect myself I'm going to assume that you're hostile okay I'm going to take a, a defensive with intent to be offensive posture okay so that's scenario two is unknown is scenario two and then scenario three is I see you walking towards me I shine my flashlight at you I get, call up your cell phone with my IFF and you answer the phone and say, Mike, I am going to shoot you down so fast. I am going to laugh and joke and party as I watch your plane tumbling down to the ground in a big ball of flames. Okay, I'm going to set off firecrackers the second you hit the ground. I know, dark, right? But that's the idea behind it. You have been identified. I have identified, my radar has identified you as hostile. You are a threat. Okay, so those are the two scenarios that will create a rectangle unknown and identified as a threat okay so let's get back into it so what we're going to do is we're going to move our tdc down now watch what happens for a second though for a second just like what we saw with our flashlight i'm going to move my elevation i'm going to point my flashlight down until you disappear let's go 15,000 feet we're just waiting okay he disappeared now you guys saw the oh damn it I hate it when I do that you guys saw the radar azimuth going back and forth like crazy up and down like crazy and yet it took a while for him to disappear okay I want you to think of this as an echo okay it takes a second so that's why you know if you're moving your 
your slews back and forth, like if you're in track all scans, so you got the two bars that move from side to side. If you're moving those too rapidly, if you're moving your elevation too rapidly, because you want to be adjusting this constantly, you want to be constantly searching the skies, you know, when you're in a combat zone. Okay, you don't want to just stick at one point and leave it. Okay, chances are someone's going to sneak up on you. You're going to miss something. So you want to be real, the, the radar is busy work. Okay, but you want to be, keep in mind of what you just saw. I moved it down to 15,000 feet. My target has now disappeared, so clearly states he's above 15,000 feet, right? Remember our flashlight, so I've now pointed the flashlight below him, okay? Um, he's flying, basically the way to think about it is what just happened here. He was flying at the ceiling, and I just pointed the top of my flashlight to a doorknob, okay? So he's above, he's in the dark. Now, it took a while for that to go away. So the best way to think about it is an echo, okay? You've shouted down the hallway, and or they've sh shouted at you. They're going, hey, 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 right? And it took a second for that echo to go away to where you couldn't hear them anymore. That's what just happened here. And the reason why I wanted to make sure you guys saw that is so that way when you're, like I said, when you're scanning, when you're doing your searches through the sky, give your radar time to report it back, okay? Make sure that you really understand what you're seeing and that you're not seeing an echo, okay? All right, so... Let's go ahead and get back, point our flashlight back up and find him. All right, so there he is. Now what we're going to do, we're going to move our TDC over him, and we're going to press our Enter key on the keyboard and lock him up. Now, this is what I was hoping was going to happen. Here, what just happened here is these four, these little squares here indicate that he is jamming. Okay, that's what that is. Now we can still see him, we can still see his distance, but and that's because of the again the high the high PRF. Or RPF, excuse me. Um, but if we try to lock him again, okay, it's just going to keep on happening. There, that's what I was waiting for too. As you get closer, now you've got what's called a solid jam. Okay, he's he's we're blinded. Okay, he's close enough, and you know this is what this means. It means he's jamming us. Okay, and this is where that um, oh, what was that command called? Uh, let's go find it real quick. So now I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. Target range prediction or whatever it was. Predicted target range. There we go. Increase and decrease comes into play. If you have like your AMRAM or your AIM-7 selected, you know, you can select a distance of where he may be and launch it and hope the weapon acquires. Okay. Don't recommend doing that. 99.9999% of the time that ends up being a... Um, waste of a missile. Now the other thing I want to talk about real quick in regard to jamming is what jamming is, okay, in regards to how this tutorial has been going. So if we're going to stay on the track with our, our flashlight, our radar's a flashlight, okay, and we're walking down a long hallway, we picked up a track, okay, as we just saw, we knew he was there, we go to lock him up, he's detecting that, okay, he goes, oh crap, they're locking me up. So what he's going to do is turn on his ECM, his electronic countermeasure. He's going to jam us. And the best way to make an example of that is, again, we're walking down our hallway. We see him, got our flashlight on him. He takes one of those like a, he throws a smoke bomb. Okay? That's what he's doing right now. He throws a smoke bomb to where our flashlight can no longer see him. Now here's what's going to happen here in a few minutes, or in actually a few seconds at our closure rate. Um, what's going to happen here in a few seconds is our flashlight is going to become strong enough, we're going to get close enough to him that our stra our flashlight is strong enough to burn through the smoke and reacquire him. We're going to be able to see him again even with the smoke on, okay? And if you ever hear, hear someone re re referring to um, burned through his jammer, that's what they're talking about. Our, our radar got close enough and the signal was strong enough that we were able to go right through his smoke and still find him. And we're going to see what that looks like here in just a second. So we'll just let it sit for just a minute. Go ahead and reduce our radar range. And there we go. It just happened. All right. So now let's look at some things that have changed. We've gotten some new information. So first, obviously, I reduce our, our radar range. Okay. So the VSD is only displaying any contacts within 40 miles. We have H and zero. What do these mean? The H indicates head on aspect. Okay. If we were, if he was at our left side, we would see, or um, turning left, excuse me, if we were seeing his left side, the left side of the plane, it'd be a left aspect. If we were seeing the right side of the plane, it'd be right, so you'd see L or R. And if he was going the other direction, so remember this little 
uh, needle here. This is a good symbology of an aircraft. If this was facing the other direction, you would see a T here for tail aspect, meaning that we're chasing him. Okay. 929 knots indicated true airspeed. Okay, so this is true airspeed. He's not really doing almost a thousand knots. Um, indicated, right? So I said that wrong. This is 929 knots, true airspeed, not indicated airspeed. Okay, over here on the left hand side here, we have his altitude. He's at a even 22,000 feet right now. Over here on the right, this is the closure rate that we were talking about earlier. We have a closure rate of 1,412 knots. Okay, so remember, it's my true airspeed and his true airspeed combined. That's our closure rate. If he was, if we're both doing, if, let me put it this way. If he was facing the other direction, okay, he's going dead away from us, okay, we're right on his tail, and he was doing 600 knots, and we were doing 650 knots, our closure rate would be 50 knots, okay? So moving on down here, we see STT, single target track. Okay, we have our ground speed. We have the IFF has not been able to identify him. So th we're, in, we're in stage two of our phone calls. This is scenario two at the moment. Okay, he hasn't answered his phone. He's unknown, so we are classifying him as a target. Okay, his, uh, our bearing is 180. Okay, and he's at 27 miles away. And if you ever want to confirm your bearing, you can just come up here to the HUD. Oops, wrong button. Oh, huh. Well, that's odd. Oh, never mind. Sorry, that makes sense. Gosh, I don't know why I was thinking that's not our heading. I was looking at the heading. Okay, so as I said, um, his bearing is 180 to us, and you can see 180 right there, slightly left of, uh, of center there. Okay, so all that adds up. I knew I second guessing myself. Sorry, guys, it's super late at night here. I just really wanted to get this out for you guys. So we'll lock our camera and we'll keep watching for a second and see what comes up next. See our closure rate increasing. You can see his airspeed increasing. All right. And now we have been able to identify him as a MiG-29, the IFF. This time he answered and he said, all right, you little son of a gun, I'm coming for you. Told us who he is, what his intentions are. He's been identified as a MiG-29. We know that he intends to shoot. Okay, still got our distance at 24 nautical miles. All right, so that pretty much sums up the radar for single target track or range wall scan. Okay, so and then to unlock, we just simply bug them. Okay, and we're back in our scan mode. All right, so that pretty much sums up the radar for range wall scan and basic operation. We will get into more of the goods in track wall scan. Track wall scan has a whole lot more options and things will go about. And then in, um, well, not a whole lot more options, but there's a little bit more to it. And then in the tutorial following that, we'll get into the weapon systems. With that in mind, guys, if you liked it, please make sure to hit that like button. And as always, subscribe. I look forward to hearing from you guys, so please leave any questions or comments um, about this video in the comment field below. And until next time, this is Overkill. I'll see you guys. Take care.